Hey everybody, uh, so today we are going to cover 11.4, which is the comparison test um, with series. So first of all, again, oh. see if we can make that a little bit better. All right, so with the comparison test uh, is another way to take something that we know that either converges or diverges and then use those to compare uh, similar or more complicated series. Uh, so a big thing here uh, that we're going to do, first of all, let's let's go through the things that we know. Uh, so then that way you have this repetitive process of remembering those definitions. So first of all, what is a series? All right, so a series is a sequence of partial sums. Alrighty, uh, uh, what it what does it mean for a series to converge? Well, a series converges when it's the limit of the sequence of partial sums converges and its limit exists and is equal to some value s and we call s the sum of the series. So again, for a series to converge, its sequence of partial sums has to converge. All right. Uh, so what are some known uh, series that we have out there? Well, we have the geometric series, which is of the form uh, the summation is n goes from 0 to uh, infinity as a r to the n. Uh, it converges when r is between negative 1 and 1, or the absolute value of r is less than 1. And it diverges when it's uh, outside of that realm. All right. Uh, the nice thing is, is if it does converge, it converges to the value a over 1 minus r. And if we start with n is equal to 1, so if our index of this uh, series starts at 1, then it's a r to the n minus one so then that way we have an agreement with that and then once you have everything sh shifted over uh, to that format of a r to the n minus one then the sum of the series is still equal to a over one minus r if it converges all right uh, the other known series that we have is the uh, p series uh, and so the most famous one out of the p series is the harmonic series this is one that we know uh, definitely diverges it's one over n uh, the summation as n goes from uh, 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Uh, and then the p-series is of the form 1 over n to the p-power. So if we know p is less than or equal to 1, that the series diverges. And if it's greater than 1, then the series converges. Uh, we Some values we do know uh, what it converges to. However, that it's not as nice and clean as the harmonic series. Or sorry, as the uh, geometric series where we know what the actual sum of that series is. Some have been found, others are not. All right. Uh, and so that leads us into, well, what type of tests do we know? Well, there's the test for divergence, uh, which we talked about uh, at the very beginning of the introduction in 11.2. Uh, and we found out that if the limit of the series, so that's that series formula, that's how it's in front of the summation symbol. Uh, we found out that if those guys... Uh, if that limit does not equal zero or does not exist, then the series diverges. That's a great thing. Uh, it's a really quick test. However, it does not tell us if the series is going to converge. So uh, one example I like to bring out just because it's the quickest one to go to is, well, what happens if we have the limit is equal to zero? Well, then a lot of people like to assume then that the series is going to converge. However, that's not the case. And the best one I like to point out is the harmonic series. The limit of 1 over n does go to 0. However, we have shown uh, in multiple ways now that that series actually diverges. So again, the test for divergence only talks about divergence. It does not guarantee anything about convergence. And then in 11.3, uh, we covered the integral test. Uh, so what we did is we found a function who behaves uh, for integer values of n, uh, behaves exactly like the series. And then we actually found out that if we can force that series to be underneath, like we built with those, uh, those Riemann sums, if we can force it to be underneath the curve, and we find out that the area underneath the curve converges, and that will force the series to converge. However, if we found out that the uh, area underneath the curve of the curve diverges, 
then the series diverges. The nice thing about that is we it talks strictly about convergence and divergence is one of those great things that we have out there, but there's a problem with it. We had to have that the function has three uh, specific properties. Those properties are that it has to be uh, positive, it has to be continuous, and it has to be uh, decreasing over its interval. Now there are some examples that we showed that where it's uh, ultimately decreasing so that's the nice thing is we do have some leeway with it however we're very limited to the amount of series that we can deal with so anything that involves a negative value or anything like that we cannot use that test so the good thing is, is once you get it to fit the integral test you're either going to get convergence or divergence and everything works out nice and clean so what about those that we can't use that there's something a little bit harder and a lot of people like to try to avoid the integral test and I understand why because you, you're using improper integrals uh, so so I understand that and so there are other tests out there that you can use however if you can apply the integral test apply it uh, because you've got a good foundation on improper integrals and uh, you guys are are more than well equipped to do that so this is where uh, the comparison tests come in handy is we take things that we know converge or diverge and we're going to compare them to things that are similar in nature to them, uh, but there could be something that we can't yet say, okay, it's either a geometric series or it's a, uh, a P series or something like that. So uh, the nice thing is, is we do have these tests out there. Now, there are two types of tests, so notice it does say comparison tests, and we're gonna go over each one. All right, so. Again, the comparison tests are a way to take something that we know that either converges or diverges and use it to compare it to similar or more complicated ones. An example of that is if we had the series uh, a sub n, or sorry, b sub n is equal to 2n. So this is our formula for it. And then so our values when we generate it will be 2, 4, 6, 8, and so forth. All right, and we're going to look at a sub n, comparing it as well, 2n minus 1, so we get the values 1, 3, 5, 7, and so forth. Okay, now if we look at the individual terms, We can say that the following, that a sub n is less than b sub n. Thus, the series as i goes from 1 to n of a sub i is less than the series as i goes from 1 to n of b sub i. All right. So here, what this is saying, uh, so notice that I'm using n instead of infinity. So this is the sum of n terms is less than this. So what we're doing is we're comparing the series, but here I'm looking at a small segment of it. Uh, so we can say, uh, so we can compare two series together if we look at these. So th this is what this is uh, going towards. So this leads us into our first test. All right, so the this is called the direct comparison test. And I am going to put this in parentheses. So sometimes you will see just this called the comparison test, depending on where you look it at, whether it's in the book or uh, like if you're trying to go through Khan Academy, that's perfect. That's another resource that you can use. So I'm, I'm not gonna stop you guys from doing that. So, uh, so the direct comparison test. So here's the conditions that we need. So we need to let, zero be less than a sub n, which is less than or equal to b sub n for all values of n. All right, so one important note I wanna make out here, note that the terms are positive. So notice that we do have another limiting factor that we have here. So that, that is the bad thing about this. 
So what we can also say about this is uh, say the ace of n is smaller is the smaller series than, and b sub n is the larger series is what we're really saying here. All right. So if we have this condition occur that we have a sub n is strictly less than b sub n or equal to uh, for all values of n and they're all positive, then one, if the series as n goes from one to infinity of b sub n converges, then the series as n goes from one to infinity of a sub n converges. So what we're saying here is if the larger series converges, then the smaller series converges. And number two, if the series as n goes from one to infinity of a sub n diverges, then the series as n goes from one to infinity of b sub n diverges. So what we're saying here is if this series if the smaller of the series diverges, then the larger one has to diverge as well. So this is kind of an example of using like the squeeze theorem uh, and also kind of the applications of what we dealt with in 11.3. So what we're doing is we're saying our baseline is zero. And then so if the smaller of the two, so if we wanted to have a small graphic of this, of what's going on. All right. So here's our zero series, if you will. And then. I'm going to plot A just to have these values. And then I'm going to plot, plot B in black here. So they could be equal at some point. So what we're doing is saying, okay, if the bottom series or if the top series here converges, then that forces or sandwiches this uh, series below it to converge. Likewise, if the bottom series diverges, blows up, then that means the top series also has to diverge. So this is kind of using the idea of the sandwich theorem when applied to series and sequences for that point. So th this is the cool thing is, is if we know how a series behaves, then we can use that to compare it to other ones. So notice here that if I could throw in a geometric series or I can throw in a P series that either converges or diverges, then I can show that the other one is going to diverge without actually really going in depth about what that series is. So let's go over a few examples. All right, determine if the series uh, converges or diverges. Let me write that a little bit better. All right, so here's our series. And is equal to one to infinity of one over two plus three to the n. All right, and again, that n is the exponent of three. So when you're going over these, so take a second, pause the video if you wanna try this out on your own. All right, so. When you're going through this, we need to say, okay, well, what does this look similar to? So one question I like to talk about is what is the driving force behind, and I'm going to write that down too, so I'm not going to leave that just hanging out there. So what is the driving force? So a question that you can ask is what is the driving force? of the denominator. What is causing the change to occur? Well, in our case, if we look at this series, that addition of two is not really doing much. So what's driving the change uh, in that denominator is this three to the n power. So, This looks similar, so our solution here, 
This resembles the geometric series of 1 over 3 to the n, as n goes from 1 to infinity. Now another way to rewrite this, so this looks more like a geometric series, because right now it doesn't have that flare, but if I rewrite this as n goes from 1 to infinity, of 1 over 3 to the n, now that's our geometric series. Well, what do we know about this geometric series? Well, we know that the series converges. And the reason that we know that, since r is equal to 1 third, which is less than 1. And I'm going to say the absolute value of r. So then that way we can, actually let me get the absolute value in there. All right. So since we know that that is less than 1, we know that this series converges because it's a geometric series. Okay. So that's something that you're going to have to state. So when you're working through this uh, particular process, the series that you're comparing it to, whether it be a geometric series, a P series, whatever it happens to be, that you have to state why that series converges or diverges. So if it's a simple property, that's great. Uh, if it's another theorem that you have, that's something else that you'd have to use. Okay, so now that we have that series converges, we need to show what? Well, if we're talking about this series of 1 over 2 plus 3 to the n converges, then that means we need our geometric series that we just established to be the larger of the two. All right, so we need to do a what we call a term-by-term -term comparison. All right. So this is all we have to do here. So term-by-term. -term. Well, that sounds extensive. But it's not that bad because all we have to do is say, well, a sub n, we have to show this less than or equal to b sub n. Well, our a sub n is this 1 over 2 plus 3 to the n. Is it less than or equal? And I'm going to put a question mark there because we have not established that. 1 over 3 to the n. Okay, so this is the known series that converges. All right. Well, here, if we let n equal 1, so we want to know if this is true. On the interval, n is greater than or equal to 1. Okay. Well, let's think about this. Well, the numerators are 1, so that's easy. So the big thing here is we have 2 plus 3 to the n and 3 to the n. So there's a couple ways that we could do this. We could cross multiply. And so if we do that, we're going to get 3 to the n is less than or equal to 2 plus 3 to the n. All right, well, is that a true statement? Well, if we subtract the 3 to the n's uh, out of this, we get 0 is less than or equal to 2. Is this a true statement? Yes. So since that's true, then we write our conclusion. So by the direct comparison test, the series converges. And that's all you have to do. Now, uh, later on, you'll see me put DCT, and um, that makes life a little bit easier. So on a test, you don't have to officially write this out. So I am going to give you some leeway with that and homework as well. So if you want to write direct comparison test out, that's great. Uh, if you don't, if you want to put by the DCT, by the direct comparison test, show me that you're using uh, that knowledge. But in order to receive full credit, you must have this type of statement in here that by the direct comparison test. And so I'm going to underline that in red right now. You must have this in there. Okay. Because we need to say, what authority do we have to talk about a series converging or diverging? All right, so now that we've got that one out of the way, let's look at another example. Determine if 
the series as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 plus the square root of n converges or diverges. All right, so take a second, work this one out, and see what you get. All right, so here's our solution. So what is the driving force behind this one? Well, for us, it's this square root of n that's popping up. So the series resembles the summation as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of n. So that's what's driving the change in here. Well, what do we know about this? Well, this is a p-series n to the 1 half power. Well, this is a divergent p-series since p is less than 1. Okay, less than or equal to 1. All right, so let's take a second with this one. If we try to do a term by term, we want this one, since it's a divergent series, to be less than. So we want it to be the smaller of the two if we're talking about divergence. There's an issue. So however, the term by term comparison yields the following. 1 over 2 plus the square root of n is less than 1 over the square root of n when n is greater than or equal to 1. So that means we can't use this. So notice that we run into this issue. Well, how do we get around that? So the direct comparison test works great if you can show or establish a term-by-term -term comparison where you're using a convergent series has to be the smaller, or sorry, it has to be the larger, or a divergent series has to be the smaller of the two. However, in this case, we have a divergent series, but it's not gonna work out for us. So, since the series is less than the divergent series, so since our, our P series is less than, or sorry, sorry, the one over two plus the square root is less than our divergent series, the direct comparison test fails. And what it means is it tells us absolutely nothing. So it's not that it fails, it's just it doesn't work for us. So let's write that down real quick. So since the series is less than our divergent P series, The direct comparison test, the DCT, tells us nothing. So there's nothing to work on. So we can't apply anything to this. So the question becomes is, is there is another smaller series? That will work. Okay, and what we want to know is, well, we know if it behaves similar to this uh, 1 over the square root of n, and we know it diverges, then probably our best guess is this thing is going to diverge as well. But we can't say, well, by our best guess, this diverges. We need to have a valid argument here to get there. So what's something that we know could be large or smaller than this 1 over 2 plus the square root of n? Well, that means for every n value, we'd have to have something that is either equal to or larger than the denominator of 2 plus the square root of n. Okay, well, that means uh, something that we do know works, and it's in the same family as the p-series, is the harmonic series. Okay. Well, what do we know about the harmonic series? Well, we know the harmonic series, so it goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n, is a divergent P series. Okay. So let's look at a comparison. So we want this to be the smaller one. So I'm going to label A sub n. 
Well, a sub n is equal to 1 over n, which is equal to 1. And then we're going to get 1 half out and then 1 third. And again, I'm just showing the terms of the series, not the actual series, because this would be a summation as we do this. So I'm doing the term by term analysis here. 1 over 4, 1 over 5, and so forth. And b sub n, in comparison, this 1 over 2 plus the square root of n is equal to 1 third. And the 1 over 2 plus the square root of 2. And then 1 over 2 plus the square root of 3. And then 1 over 4. Then 1 over 2 plus the square root of 5. And so forth. So notice here, if we looked at the terms, comparing these guys, it's not until we reach this term here that we have our equal or uh, inequality that we want. So note. a sub n is less than or equal to b sub n when n is greater than or equal to 4. Okay, so well, what does that mean for us? Well, that means for by the direct comparison test, we can say that the series diverges. So notice here, we said for all values of n, okay, back in our uh, direct comparison test. All right, so what we're doing is we're shifting this along. So I've only shifted a finite number of terms to get there. Okay. So therefore, so we do have, again, a little bit of wiggle room here, just like what we had with the integral test where we could have something that is ultimately decreasing. If we have to shift the series a little bit, I'm only going a finite number of terms, which is not going to change if a series is divergent. So if I move the first 10 terms out of the way and go for the rest of the infinite series and it diverges, then by adding those terms to a divergent value already, it's going to diverge. So therefore, by the direct comparison test, DCT, the series diverges. Now, another way that you could have done that is... Uh, go about by solving uh, the denominators uh, through that by comparison because we wanted uh, 1 over the denominator of n to be greater than 2 plus the square root of n. So there's a couple of ways that you could have approached that uh, to get there. All right. So our next example. Determine if the series, as here, just to get you used to seeing some other letters, so it's okay, doesn't matter if this is not an N or not, it's still a series. Uh, it's just we'll have to have an agreement with our values in here. So determine if the series of from 1 to infinity of the natural log of k over k converges or diverges. So take a second and see what you can come up with. All right, so here's our solution. So this guy is similar to the series as k goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over k. So this is our harmonic series. So now a couple ways that you could do this is if you identify this as the harmonic series and you say it diverges, that's perfectly fine. Or if you label it as a divergent P series, which it is. So either one's perfectly fine. If you call it by its name or call it by its family name, uh, those are perfectly acceptable ways to do that. So, so here I'm showing you two different ways to write it. All right, so our question is, is the harmonic series smaller than this natural log of k over k? So the question is, is a of k less than or equal to 
b sub k. So in our case, this 1 over k is it less than or equal to the natural log of k over k. And we want to say for all k. Is this true? All right. Well, the only difference that occurs here is the, uh, the numerator. So we've got to be very, very careful about that. So if the denominator stay the same, if we can say that 1 is less than or equal to the natural log of k, then we're good. Okay, But we are starting with when uh, k is equal to 1. So what we can do is we start looking at a series of values or a table of values. So I'm going to look at the natural log of k versus k. All right. So in my k values, I'm going to start with 1, and then there's 2, 3. Obviously, you guys can, can do this. So if we plug in values into our calculator, well, natural log of 1 is 0. The natural log of 2 is 0.69, roughly. Then we get 1.09 and 1.38. So it's at this point at 3 when the numerator is going to be larger than 1. Okay. So therefore, so note here, note that the natural log of k is greater than 1 when k is greater than or equal to 3. So a sub n, which is equal to 1 over, sorry, a sub k, let me use the right subscript here, which is is less than the natural log of k over k, which is our beasts of k, when k is greater than or equal to 3. So by the direct comparison test, the series diverges. And that's all you have to do for that part. All right. So, uh, the nice thing about this is using known uh, functions can help us out, uh, and also using known values. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples here uh, that I'm going to write up, and I want you to go through it, and then we will uh, go through these problems together. So, now that you've had some extra practice, or some good examples, I'm going to use a couple of terms here. So determine if they converge or diverge. Converge or diverge. All right. Let's roll into infinity of 5 over 2n squared plus 4n plus 3. Another one I want you to do. Again, the same type idea. This one's going to be a little bit more interesting. And I know how you love, you guys love having uh, trig functions in here. So we're going to throw in a trig function and might as well throw in an exponential function as well. All right. And then our last example uh, that we'll look at is the following. All right, so take a moment and work these guys out. Okay, and this k goes from 1 to infinity. All right, so pause the video. Take a few minutes to work these out. See what the driving force is behind each of these functions, and then make your conclusion.
All right. So, in this first one, so notice here, what is the main driving force behind this particular series? Well, for us, well, we have this uh, 2n squared plus 4n plus 3, so n and n squared. Well, n squared is going to be forcing this to uh, the denominator to blow up faster than that plus 4n. So, our solution here is this is similar to the series, and you can actually include the 5 in the uh, for all of this as well. So 5 over 2n squared. And this is n goes from 1 to infinity. And another way we could write that is we take this 5 over 2 out, since it's a constant multiple, and then 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Well, what do we know about 1 over n squared? Well, this is a p-series that converges. All right, so we need to show that this convergence series is the larger of the two. So is this a true statement? All right, so uh, we can go through some a little bit of algebra for this. So 10n squared, is that less than or equal to 10n squared plus 20n plus 3? Uh, and so subtracting the 10n squares, we get 0 is less than or equal to, uh, oh, I forgot my n here, 20n plus 3. Well, if we solve this, divide, so this is when n is greater than or equal to 20, sorry, then 3 20ths. So since we're dealing with integer values, this means this is a true statement for any n value from 1 to infinity. So therefore, by the direct comparison test, the series converges. Okay, so we have our starting point. We know that this is true. So again, backtracking here, when n is greater than or equal to 3 20ths, so again, greater than or equal to 1 for our case, then yes, 5 over 2n squared is going to be greater than 5 over 2n squared plus 4n plus 3. And that's easy to see, too, because we have this additional piece uh, to the denominator, which means this is going to be larger. And so therefore, that denominator is good. That whole fraction is going to be smaller. All right. The next one. This one's a little bit more interesting uh, because we are dealing with cosine. So the reason I'm bringing this one in is think about what is happening with cosine. As you go to infinity, so just think about uh, the, the behavior if we were to apply a limit on this. So if we were to talk about the limit of cosine as uh, like cosine x, as x approaches infinity, what happens? Well, we get this oscillating behavior between negative 1 and positive 1, right? So that means the largest that this will ever be is when cosine is equal to 1. And that means the, the smallest that the numerator will be is when cosine is equal to negative 1. So let's maximize the uh, numerator. So as n approaches infinity, cosine of n is approaching either 1 or negative 1. So again, I'm going to maximize this as much as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a similar, left the L off of there, to the summation as n goes from 1 to infinity of 2 over e then. Now the reason I chose 2 here is because I'm maximizing my numerator. Okay? Because if I can show it at its maximum that it's going to be either smaller or larger, then uh, that's going to help us out here. So the reason I'm going that direction is, well, let's look at this. If I rewrite this just ever so slightly, as n goes from 1 to infinity, I have 2 times 1 over e to the n, right? 
Well, that's a geometric series. And this value of 1 over e is in between negative 1 and 1. So therefore, this is a convergent geometric series. And if we wanted to, I could tell you exactly what the uh, sum of that series is, but I don't have to do that. So this is a convergent geometric series. So what I want to do is I want to show that this is the largest. So that's why I chose 2 over e to the n, because I'm maximizing the value of our numerator. All right. So if that's the case, then 1 plus cosine of n over e to the n is less than or equal to 2 over e to the n. And since I already talked about this numerator, yes, this is always going to be less than or equal to 2. It's less than or equal to 2. And then we can say cosine of n is less than or equal to 1 for all n greater than or equal to 1. Thus, by the direct comparison test, the series converges. And that's all you have to do for that. All right. So again, we maximize the numerator uh, and then found out that it is going to be the larger because one, we get to keep the denominators the same. So it's the numerators that are telling us what to do. All right. This one becomes a little bit more interesting because we have a lot of multiplication going on. But the big thing is, is let's focus on what the driving force of the numerator and the denominator are. Okay. And I'm going to try to do this in different colors and that way we got it. So I'm going to say similar to the series as k goes from 1 to infinity. Uh, well, well, 2k is the driving force of this first piece. And then that k squared. So that's all of our driving forces for the uh, numerator. For the denominator, we have this k. And then we have k squared. But don't forget that squared term up on top. All right, so let's simplify this guy down a little bit. Because there's a lot going on here, and it looks horrible at the beginning. So we're going to have 2k cubed over k to the fourth, so k to the fifth. So I can rewrite this as k goes from 1 to infinity of 2 over k squared, which is a convergent p-series. All right, something that we have proven. So now the big thing, we want to show where this guy converges or diverges, OK? So we want to show that this is the larger of the two series. So we want 2k minus 1 over k squared minus 1, all divided by k plus 1, and this k squared plus 4 squared. We want this to be less than or equal to our 2 over k squared. Now the nice thing is, is we do have some simplifying that can occur, not much. Uh, so I am going to dwindle this down just a little bit. So we're going to get 2k minus 1. This is a difference of squares. So I'm going to factor out the k plus 1s and cancel those out. So I get k minus 1 up on top. And then on bottom, I just have k squared plus 4 squared is less than or equal to 2 over k squared. Now, this one uh, can get out of hand pretty quickly when you're going through it. Uh, you just got to be careful of how you multiply things uh, as you're going through. So let's see if we can get some things to cancel out. Because if we can get some things to cancel out, then we're pretty good on track here. So let's multiply these together, and then we'll multiply by k squared. So I'm going to cross multiply here. Uh, so I'm going to get 2k squared minus 3k plus 1 multiplied by k squared. So again, I just multiplied our 2k minus 1 or k minus 1 together. And just double checking that. All right. Is less than or equal to 2 
times, and then I'm just going to multiply this guy out. It's a perfect square. So we're going to get k to the fourth plus 8k squared plus 16 out of that. All right, so multiplying some things. So we are going to get 2k to the fourth minus 3k cubed plus k squared is less than or equal to 2k to the fourth plus 16k squared plus 32. Now let's see if we can cancel some things out. All right. My k to the fourth are going to cancel each other out. So I'm going to have negative 3k cubed plus k squared is less than or equal to 16k squared plus 32. All right. And let's move everything over to the right hand side. So when is this true? All right, so this one is going to take some time for figuring out some values uh, for that. So, th so notice that there is a big issue when you're approaching these problems that the algebra can get out of hand. Uh, so the nice thing is we have all addition going through here. Let me make sure that we've done everything correctly. The nice thing here is we can automatically say, well, this is always true since we have addition uh, going on. So I added the 3k cubed over. Uh, and again, this stays the same. And k is greater than or equal to 1. All right. And so notice here that this is a true statement. One, because we have addition going all the way through. Uh, so there were some good things that did come out of this one. Sometimes we're not that lucky, so uh, doing a table of values uh, can help out in this situation. Uh, but this one you don't really have to prove because notice that every single term is going to be positive, uh, and we're also using positive values of k, so there's no issues with that cubic function uh, that's going to cause us any problems. So this is uh, perfectly legitimate in that case. So we have now showed an equality to occur uh, or a true statement to occur so therefore we can say then by the direct comparison test the series converges all right so this is the nice thing about the direct comparison test it has a lot of handy tools that um, if we for a lot of times it's very very quick that we can say yeah these two are one's greater and one's smaller then we're good to go not all the time is that the case and there are some issues and this is to lead us into uh to the next uh part of this section because this is a two-part lecture uh, for this is what happens if we have something If we have the following series, the summation as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Well, for this, I see that 1 over 2 to the n is that that's our driving force behind this. So, but there's an issue. If I use 1 over 2 to the n, that's going to be smaller than 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Well, 1 over 2 to the n converges, but that doesn't force this larger one to converge or diverge. So, but we feel very, this is very, very close to this uh, geometric series of 1 over 2 all raised to the n. So this is where the next comparison test is going to help us out. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch uh, to the limit comparison test. So this wraps up our lecture for today. So this is, uh, again, 11.4, uh, the comparison test. So we just now did a very in-depth look at the direct comparison test. So next uh, 
lecture is still going to be from 11.4 and we're going to be wrapping it up talking about the limit comparison test and how it can be useful because for problems like this the direct comparison test does not help us because we can't establish that the uh, convergent series is going to be larger than the series that we're testing so uh, that's where the limit comparison test is going to come in handy all right so that's what i have for you today and you all have a wonderful day